November 6, 1860. Abraham Lincoln, a renowned atheist and practicing Jew, is elected president by the United States of Judea. Not one southern state is won by agnostic Abe. This would be the final straw in a century-long dilemma between North and South. A month later, on December 20th, 1860, South Carolina became the first state in American history to secede. In the following month, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas would also leave Lincoln's new Jewish Union. From these states, a new, more perfect union was formed, one forged of liberty and zeal by Aryan titans. This nation would forever be known as the Confederate States of America. As expected, Lincoln's response was swift and degenerate. By Jove, these Southerners mustn't prevail. I shall die before I let one single Goyam subject escape my heel. Despite the looming threat of war, all seemed well for the Southern nation. Montgomery, Alabama was made the capital, a Congress was formed, and Jefferson Davis, a hero of the Mexican-American War, was made president. However, a thorn remained in the burgeoning nation's side. A bastion of Yankee villainy festered in one of the South's most important cities. Fort Sumter, a state fort turned synagogue by the U.S., stood in Charleston Harbor. Its guns threatened mercantile traffic and the good people of Charleston. Southern engineers, at the behest of Pierre Gustave Toutant Bodyguard, I tore my little mustache, <laughs> constructed earthen ramparts and gun batteries encircling the Yankee Masada. Sumter was incomplete and undermanned, but the threat of reinforcement remained. In March of 1861, an ambassador from Lincoln's regime informed the Confederate government of agnostic Abe's intention to resupply the federal cesspit. President Lincoln yearns to prevent the starvation of his minions within the fort. That is why an attempt shall be made soon to resupply its stocks of adornic chrome and cunning. Know that you have been warned. Tensions mounted and the situation appeared dire, made worse when an attempt by the Federals to resupply Sumter using the USS Lolita Express was met with the wrath of every Confederate gun within range. The Lolita Express was forced to turn back and Sumter's atheist garrison went hungry. Following the ordeal, General Beauregard wrote to President Davis, Mr. President, I am happy to inform you that a Yankee attempt to molest our harbor's entrance was met with steel and shot. Oh, how the Jewish banner flapped in the breeze as they madly withdrew with haste, tail still between their hind legs. God is my witness, sir. The atheist scoundrel within the fort shall not be refreshed. President Davis replied, So calm, so blunt, so true, sir. Your attempts to defend Charleston are admirable, and I commend your efforts. Davis knew just how precarious their position was, and on March 23, 1861, he informed the Confederate Congress of the severity of the situation. Never in the history of the world has a people so honest, so benevolent, and so frugal been tormented by and subjected to a predicament as unjust as the one we face. Now you see. Nobody was more aware of the bleak reality than Major Robert Anderson, who wrote to Lincoln about the dismal situation in the federal den of sin. My men go hungry and my wrinkles sag. Our adrenochrome stores grow dry as bone, and not one baby nor fetus has been feasted on since this whole ordeal commenced. Mr. President, as soon as another ship can be acquired, it must be used to refresh our fort. Yikes, that sounds really bad, but you kind of wrote me at an awkward time. Uh, I'm actually getting a lithograph of my wife getting fucked by Frederick Douglass, so uh, I'll get back to you when I can. The very next day, Jefferson Davis gave the fateful order. In the early hours of April 12, 1861, General Beauregard delivered a rousing speech to his men. Gentlemen, friends, patriots, this is it. We have been ordered to finally drive those vile vermin off of that rock. We have our orders, and they are to... Do the country a great service. You shall forever be remembered as the heroes of your day. Man the guns! At 4.30 a.m., a single mortar fired from Fort Johnson streaked across the blackened sky and detonated above Fort Sumter's synagogue. The fight preserved the greatest nation on Earth, and no, not the United States, you fucking retard, had begun.